waiting for it to there we go greetings readers and travelers and welcome to another episode of chat and stats my name is richie stevens your wonderful host for this lit rpg quest or progression fantasy dungeon core everything you know game lit stuff today as always because he's he's shown up for the past few episodes i'm joined by my co-host and best friend and gaming partner joel harvey joel how we doing today that's me i'm a gaming partner now <laughs> you've always been a gaming partner <laughs> Co-op buddy, well, no it's just he he does random like i, I do random and, shit every time uh yeah that's the new one so <laughs> cool uh, I'm doing fantastic. I'm here to talk about some James Hunter work. So, uh... and joining us for the very yeah. first time on Chat and Stats, this sorry, is an episode I'm that sorry. has been a, like I think three years in the making. We have been talking about doing this since our very first season. I joining us terrible. today is James Hunter, and James, don't feel terrible. I, no, You're I'm not, serious. Like you guys, you are you guys busy, are so dude. Awkward, uh, I'm like, oh man, I should really, I should really go out and do their thing, but I'm really bad at time management, and I get super hyper focused, and, uh, and and then I just like, and then I, and then I forget, I forget. But I'm super, I'm super excited to be here. You guys are, you guys are both super cool, and uh, I'm really happy to be here. For those who don't know me, I'm James Hunter. Um, I've been writing uh, books for a while since 2015 is when I released my first one. I've been doing lit RPG since kind of the early days, 2016. Um, I've written a lot of books since then. I think I've written, I think I'm on 42 uh, since right. 2015. So a lot of books uh, and probably my best known series. I got a couple of them here, but uh, uh, I'm probably best known for Brilliant Gate Online, uh, eight book series. Uh, Rogue Dungeon is another one that's uh, my pretty favorite. popular. Um, Vigil Bound is one of my newer series that I'm working on. I don't have any copies of Wasteland Warlords because uh, we sold out of them in our last Comic Con, but. Uh, I did that one, and I'm currently working on a new one called uh, Discount Dan. Um, aside from writing, I also run Shadow Alley Press with my wife, Jeanette. So uh, we've been publishing other people since about 2017. We have, at this point, I think about 20 other authors uh, and about 250 titles on the Shadow Alley side of things. I, I got a little yeah. collection right here. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, and we and we have we have some really fantastic authors. Uh, Nathan Amy is one of ours. Uh, he did the the Fey Nexus series, which is great. Um, Eric and the Unintended Cultivator is is one of our newer ones that's out. That's kind of smashing it right now. Uh, Apocalypse Redo by Jacob Greif uh, is super great. But yeah, we have we have tons of tons of fantastic authors, tons of fantastic books. And uh, yeah, okay, I got it right here. And I mean, this is a, this is a thick boy. It's a, it's a, a chunky one. boy. Uh, Jacob does not know how to write uh, uh, <laughs> short books. So he, he writes door stoppers. But yeah, so we have some some great authors um, and we have some exciting new stuff coming coming in the pipeline as well. So I'm super happy to be here to talk little RPG progression fantasy, whatever, man. So I was going to say one thing I, I do want to uh, point out for Shadow Alley, uh, Shadow Alley Press I like that you guys don't stick to just lit RPG. You have like a variety of stuff. And one of the examples I wanted to bring up, actually two of them, is one, Pale City by Marshall yeah. J. Moore. Marshall is such an absolute gem. No, and it's so good, He's right? He's so down to earth. And this book was fantastic. I could not put yeah. this down. I got it at, um, the I think it was uh, the Friday of Dragon Con. I came yes. up to the booth because I was hanging out with... Um, Emily Godhand doing uh during her signing yeah and everything and then she introduced me to Marshall and I was like oh I follow you on TikTok I know that book cover it's been in the back so I got a copy of this and then of course I want to point out a snake's life by snake's Kevin Ray. Life. this series absolutely fantastic I slept on for too long yeah oh my god it's so good <laughs> Yeah, if you if you like if you like non-human MCs I, I think that's one of the best non-human MC series out there and with a different take on Norse mythology. Yeah. that That's what I was looking for. And that's what actually sold me on it was I put a post in one of the lit RPG groups. And um, I was just like, hey, I'm looking for, you know, lit RPG that's got a little bit of a Norse theme to it. Anyone got any recommendations? And Kevin actually, com or not Kevin, Kenneth actually commented on the post and I was like, oh, we have that book in our library. It's just, it's been in my backlog. Just sitting there. Yeah. I'll start it now because Joel and I, we share an account for Audible and for the podcast. I have that so we, like yeah. Forever ago. 
And I think you yeah. had all all three that were out at that point. And I was like, okay, time to power Absolutely. through this. And I didn't stop. I didn't stop. I think I went through a book a day. Yeah, they're they're super good. He's in and he's a he's a good writer, a really creative storyteller. And uh yeah, I, I, I like the I like kind of the dungeon core and the 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 non-human MCs. That's good old Steve. Hey, what's going on, man? Um I, I like all of that stuff. So so Shadow Alley tends to to cater I, I mean we will publish anything if we think that it looks good, but we do try to to curate our our catalog a little bit more, and and that and that's kind of the the awesome part about being a publisher is even though I am concerned about you know I, I want to make sure the books sell and authors are making money, I mostly get to like publish things that I like. I'm like, oh man, this book is awesome. I this this is a thing that should be out in the world, so I'm going to publish this thing so that it can be out there in the world. So most of the stuff in Shadow Alley. It's just stuff that I stumbled across and really enjoyed. And I was like, yes, this is excellent. This is uh, this is my taste. And so we, we put it out there like that. But uh, we, we definitely curate our catalog a little bit more. And like you said, we although we do mostly game lit and progression fantasy, we, we also experiment with other things. We have a, a, a sci-fi arm. Uh, we have a more traditional like high fantasy arm. Pale City is a good example of kind of yeah. our the, the stuff that we do more just like straight up high fantasy. Um, we've done urban fantasy stuff as well. Um, again, game lit and progression fantasy are bread and butter, but we, we like the ability to do other things outside of those specific genres for sure. It's, it's definitely a nice change of pace too. Cause like, while I'm like, I, I mainly do my lit RPG and game lit stuff. I go through and I'm like, okay, I need a dungeon core book. I need time yeah. travel. I need, I, there's, there's always that niche, like pick of what I'm in the mood for. And, uh, Sam actually commented asking about what about the series about the dungeon core schools shadow uh shadowcroft academy yeah have that right there <laughs> that book i judged I by the cover cool. and my judgment was correct it's fantastic it's yeah, so it's, it's silly very wonky i always say that cover is the litmus test if you look at that and you're like this does not repulse me you should try that book it's great um but it's very wonky it's very silly very off the wall um, it's a little bit more like on the on the the game lit uh, lit RPG scale. It leans a little bit more toward the Dakota Kraut side of things, where yeah. it's kind of like goofy and a little silly and and sort of punny uh, things like that. Um, but it's it's a fantastic series, and it and, and it mixes a lot of tropes. Um, I, I think we did it. Aaron and I, my co-author, we did a I think we did a good job of sort of mixing the tropes, playing with the magical academy stuff, the dungeon core stuff, the non-human MC weirdness stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I know. So whenever we first started our podcast, it was mainly just lit RPG. And then as we got into the genre and read more of like Dungeon Core, then like Cultivation and other like progression fantasies, we're like, man, we got to talk about these too. <laughs> like, yeah. they're all really good. <laughs> so we kind of went through that same phase of like, I like this as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Heidi, uh, gave us a comment of, I'd like to see more f female main characters in a lit RPG. I'll say two series that definitely come to mind are of course the Viridian gate spinoffs. Uh, is it JD Astra's, uh, Phoenix? Yeah. And She's got the, the firebrand series and then Emily's, uh, uh, Heartfire Heartfire Healer. Healer series are both, both fantastic series, uh, with female MCs. I was going to say they're, those are both fantastic. Uh, are the Viridian gates still on audible? premium or audible plus no they came out of audible plus at the beginning of this year um and we're we're getting ready to take those wide with tantor now okay so they're they're not on spotify yet but they will be on spotify shortly so the illusionist series is already wide so you can find it on not just audible but on spotify and other places but the uh, the rest of the books in the expanded universe are also uh going to be going wide to itunes and spotify that's fair. Um, and, and I will say for since you guys are both audio listeners, um, the Heartfire Healer series, currently there's only one book out, uh, audio book out in that yeah. series. Uh, but Tantor is finishing the production on those. So that should be starting uh, pretty soon. I, I, I'd have to check with mm -hmm. my wife to figure out what the timeline is. But uh, those will also be be coming to to uh, audio in the not too distant future. See, I so I got the uh, complete set from em or Emily at um, Dragon Con. 
Actually, yeah. I got two sets, one for me, one for my girlfriend, because I was trying to get her into lit RPG. Yes. And so I was like, oh, that's such a good series to start with. It's a fun one, you know, MC, uh, female MC, and there's a Plague Doctor. My girlfriend absolutely loves Plague Doctors. I was like, this yes. is going to be perfect. So I got her, um, got her the set as well. But we had Emily on the show, what, two years ago, Joel? Three? It was our first, Something end of the like first that. season, beginning of the second season, I think. I know it was before, it was while I was in Colorado still. And we had her on it. I think it was around the time the first audiobook came out, uh, which is it Units Wong who did the first? Yeah, narration? that's right. Fantastic book. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic book. So that's one mm-hmm. I always recommend. And I'm like, it's, it's a great way to like check out like a side story for yeah. the Viridian Gate universe. And then I'm like, okay, if you like that taste, definitely check out the Viridian Gate online main series because yeah. it's just, it's always like if someone's looking for a certain like taste, I always have like that list. If they're like, oh, yeah. I kind of want like a dark paladin type character. I'm like, okay, then do the main series for Viridian Gate or now Vigil's Justice because that's what he kind of gives the vibe of. Yeah, he's got that. He's got that uh, the sort of reckless paladin for sure. I, I will also say, uh, Heidi, if you like, um, I don't know if you're an audio listener or not, but we have a, we have a series. I recommend it every time I can. It's called Path of Thunderbird. My co-author on the Rogue Dungeon series, Eden Hut- Hudson, wrote it. Wrote it. And uh, Path of Thunderbird, it is phenomenal. It is one of the best. It's not lit RPG. It's progression fantasy. But it is, it's one of my favorite things that we've ever published ever. It never did as well as I thought that it should have done because it's just so like the characters are so amazing, um, and it's a uh, that it, it has a, a female main character uh, MC, um, but it is absolutely fantastic. Travis Baldry is the narrator on that series, if that sways you at all, and uh, and and we got Travis we we got Travis to re-record those books, um, and this was when he was like super busy. So little, little known fact, Travis Baldry is one of the biggest Eden Hudson fans on the planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he reached out to us. He's like, hey, anytime you have a book that she has written, I will make time in my schedule to narrate it because I like her writing that much. Um, I, I think he talked about that when we had him on the podcast. Yeah. So like I said, great, great guy, great narrator, but also, uh, I mean, he just lo- loves, loves Eden's work he, to pieces. So check her, check her he out. He did her well. Death Cultivator series, right? He did it. He did indeed do that one as well. That is such a fun series, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure the fact that uh, that that Eden uh, co-authored Rogue Dungeon with me was like 95 percent of the reason why he agreed to do uh, Rogue Dungeon Six um, was because it was like, well, I mean, if it's, it's Eden, Eden book, yeah. I guess I'll just make time for it. So, and of course, Travis does the Wasteland Warlords, which and is the a continuation Warlords. of Rogue yeah. Dungeon, which. That threw me like off guard when it when it came out. I was like, "How is this going to be a continuation?" Oh, now I yeah. okay. So the the crazy thing is, I so Eden and I had, had workshopped that idea a while ago. They those the Wasteland Warlords did not do as well as I well they did exactly as well as I ex- expected because they're novellas. So yeah. Audible had come to us and they were like, "Hey, we want a series of short form stories." novella length stories um because they're basically doing a marketing thing and they're like oh we want we're gonna put them in the plus catalog but we're trying to to reach a different demographic yeah kind of the the people that don't necessarily want like 15 hour audiobooks i'm like i don't know who that is who who are you talking about these people don't (laughs) exist but they were sure that these people existed and i was like all right i mean we'll we'll roll the dice so okay so you're one of these people so I, I, I was hour audiobooks. <laughs> I was gonna say I like my longer audiobooks, but sometimes I do need a breath of fresh air and I enjoy something a little bit shorter. Yeah. Just because that way I can, you know, get I feel like I'm getting through it a little bit quicker. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more reading done because I listen to these while I'm at work. Yeah. So with uh the Wasteland Warlords, I waited, I think, until book three or four dropped, and then I just powered through them because yeah. I was like I'm going to let these build up. I'm going to power through them. One, boom, 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 boom. That way I can, you know, just feel like I'm accomplishing a little bit more, but also not at the same time, I guess. No, no, I I, I totally get that. I totally get that. Yeah, I I was, I was very hesitant uh, to, to make this deal with Audible 
because I was like, man, people are not, they're not going to read the ebooks because n nobody likes novellas. Everybody wants like big doorstopper books um, and they're not going to spend an audio credit on something that's less than eight hours. And they're like, well, don't worry about that. We'll put it in the plus catalog. And, and then, uh, you know, that, that way people won't have to spend a credit on it. And so that was really the selling point for me. It was like, okay, if we can put them in the plus catalog so that people do not have to spend a credit, then maybe people will take a gamble on them, even though they're short. Yeah. Um, and I'm really happy with the way that they turned out. I think they're like for being like, cause each one's only like three to four hours of listening time. So kind of in the 30 to 40,000 word range, like a, like half of a novel, but I feel like Eden and I really managed to like cram a lot of story into a, a relatively small amount of space for each one of those novellas. So I was really yeah. happy with the way they turned out with the space restrictions that we had to work with. Cause audible was very clear. Like they're like, Hey, 40,000 words. That's the upper limit. You cannot go past this. And I've never been great at short form fiction. So it was kind of a, a good uh, writing challenge for me to, to push myself to be able to tell a complete story and what felt like a very small amount of words. All right. The, I mean, they're, they're definitely a fun listen. And especially if you, if you are looking for something, is there a, uh, I know paperback has a bundle now for like one through three. Is there an audio yeah, version so as well, or is it still just the, we, we, uh, we haven't been able to do it on audio. Um, we tried, we asked, they were not open to that idea for whatever reason. Um, but the ebooks, there is like a, a one through three omnibus ebook, mm -hmm. and you can also order a, a paperback one through three, like paperback omnibus edition. And there's, if it's not out already, there's, it's going to come out this month. There's a, a four through six ebook and a four through six omnibus print edition that you can also get. So okay, we wanted people to be able to have them. Um, the one really good thing though, on the sort of the, writing publishing side is i think we're planning to set wasteland warlords one to free uh and then we'll be able to so so it won't be in ku but it'll be free um but then we'll be able to give it out uh like as an email list sign up and and yeah. uh, just like give it out to people as a as a, a mailing list builder uh we also plan to print out um just the first novella that that first wasteland warlords uh, as a as a kind of thin print novella that we can give out at cons and stuff like that because the, the only cost is like maybe a, a buck. That's awesome. Buck fifty to print or something. So we'll be able to give out a bunch of them. Oh yeah, hey, that that'd be still a fun item to have on the shelf and everything. So that's what I'm thinking, right? Like it's yeah. kind of a, a cool little just neat neat thing to take home with you. I mean, I I need to get a new shelf. My my collection is now like shelf is full. Collection is piling up on top of dresser. Need new shelf. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a, I have the same I have the same problem looking around my office and it's just I think I have too, uh, too many books for the salt around here somewhere. The uh, oh, the cookbook, cookbook you guys made. I, yeah, that, I, was, that was a fun thing too. I, I think I have one copy sitting on a shelf somewhere. But uh, yeah, we made a we made a little uh, a cookbook um, for salt, fantastically themed food for your face hole. And uh, Shout out to it's sort of narrated from Kaz's perspective, um, but the but a bunch of Shadow Alley authors all contributed recipes, and then we basically um, Shadow Alleyed them. So they're recipes from our authors, uh, but then we we sort of dressed them up so they're they they coincide with various books that we publish. So like there's a there's a, a rat on a stick uh, recipe from the VGO series um, there, you know, so anyways, there's a, there's a bunch of different recipes and uh, it's the, it's the only real lit RPG book that exists in the sense that there's actually um, like a, a, an achievement checkoff that you get for completing various recipes and you can check them off and you can, uh, here, let me, I'll, I'll grab it real quick. It's, it's pretty neat. <laughs> I think. I was going to say, there should be there on the shelf somewhere. Yeah, let me check. Um, so, yeah, this is our our little For Salt cookbook here. But uh, I need to get me a copy of it because I, I was mad when Joel was like, oh, yeah, by the way, I got this. I was like, that's my boy, Kaz. Like, that is. <laughs> that's my, that's my so, they, so it's all got like this little like, it, it's written in Kaz's voice as though Kaz was narrating it. Um, but uh, there's all, all kinds of little uh, recipes from various uh vgo books or or rogue dungeon books other things that we've done so here's our rat, rat on the stick 
Um, but you'll see in the front. Um, Kaz is probably one of my favorite characters. So there's and, actually uh, this, this culinary two, character sheet that you can fill out as you work your way through the recipes. And then there's all these unlockable achievements for, for cooking the cooking the various things. Um, so yeah, it, it was kind of a, a fun, silly idea, but but I, I like that we have it, that it exists yeah. in the world. So since we're on the topic of Rogue Dungeon right now, uh, yes. Jay, I brought it up in a couple of your lives when you do your TikTok and you, of course, talk about Rogue Dungeon. I, I got to bring some light to my boy, Poner Boner, Scott Bayani. Is that your, yeah. your other favorite? He, he is top two. Him and Kaz are top two. Rorik is number three. Even though Rorik is the main character. He does get overshadowed by Scott in the later books. So, sometimes, Spoiler sometimes alert. I think my top two is probably. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I think my favorite top two is probably Kaz and uh, Ford. Oh, yeah. 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 The, the, the big old Reese, uh, uh, former Marine kind of shit kicker. He's great. Yeah. I forgot about Ford. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. Scott gets such a redemption arc and spoiler alert for Rogue Dungeon, but definitely worth listening to if you're curious about how a redemption arc is done right. Because yeah. when we first meet Scott, he is an insufferable dick. He is just I mean, he's, he's always kind of an insufferable dick, even even through the entire series. Okay, he's but kind of he's more bearable. Dick. And it's like, yeah. okay, I understand why he's such a dick now. Yeah. But when we first meet him. Holy hell, I was like, I am not going to like it. I just love his name. And I actually <laughs> changed my gamer tag on uh, Warzone for the longest time to Poner Boner 007. <laughs> I love that. Because I was like, hell yeah, this is great. And I actually had to do, um, for Boner, I had to put BW in ER because they're yeah. like, oh no, can't do Boner. It's against T TOS. And I was like, someone's name is Riley Reed. And I get yelled at for that. For, for Poner Boner? <laughs> <laughs> so for, for those who have not read the series this is uh some spoiler territory but uh basically rorik is this this hedge mage in a world where the dark lord has already won he there's an assassination attempt that goes horribly wrong and through the power of magic that i won't go into he ends up as a a in another dimension as a level one dungeon troll in this ultra immersive fantasy game um but he still has access to his magic. And so through the access to his magic, he's basically able to grant sentience and this thing called the world stone pendant, which he steals from the, the big bad guy. Um, he's, he's able to sort of give actual sentience to these other like game characters that are, that are in him. So all these NPC dungeon monsters end up sort of getting sentience. And in the first couple of books, the main bad guy is actually this online gamer named Poner Boner 69 who is a douchebag in, in the, in the, the greatest possible sense of the word. Um, Rorik realizes that uh, he can level up faster by, by basically griefing heroes over and over and over again okay. uh, and stealing their stuff. And he thinks it's super funny. And so even though it's really bad gaming etiquette to camp on these bodies and murder these people over and over and over again, that's what he does. Cause he leveled up super fast and Poner is convinced that Rorik is a hacker. He's a, a modder who is modding the game on fairly to play as a, is a, a dungeon mob and he becomes super obsessed. And so they, the, the battle of wills ensues between this super douchey gamer and Rorik, who's trying to get strong enough to go back into his home world and take down Merrick, who's the, the dark Lord in his world. So Poner Boner is, is terrible. He's kind of the main antagonist for the first couple of books. Um, but one of my favorite tropes of all time, and you'll, you'll kind of see this. If you read a lot of my books, you'll see this come to fruition. My my two favorite tropes are, uh, I, I really like buddy cop stuff, mm -hmm. and buddy cop is usually kind of an enemies to friends trope. Um, and then I, lo I love the enemy to friend redemption arc where, and I do it in BGO with Osmark, I do it in, in Rogue Dungeon with Poner. I, I love like taking the bad guy and then kind of working them through that redemption arc um, that's just one of my favorite things as a writer is to see bad people reform. So yeah, uh, and, and I think with Poner Boner, it turned out it's awesome. It's I think that great. is that is when someone asks me, they're like, "Hey, what's a good redemption arc or anything like that?" And they're usually talking like video games or movies. And I'm like, "No, yeah, Scott Bayani." And they're like, "Who the hell is Scott Bayani?" I was like, "Okay, so there's this book, <laughs> Rogue Dungeon. 
I recommend it. Please go check it out. It's narrated by Nick Podell. If you want an audio book and you want yeah. to your narration. And I actually got my buddy to read it. And he's, uh, I think he's on dungeon duel right now. So book five. Okay. Yeah. And he's like, okay, he's growing on me. I was like, Oh, it only took you five books. And he, yeah. I was like, he starts to like really turn in around book four. We yeah. get a little bit of a, like, you know, a little taste of what he actually is like in real life. And I understand why he's an insufferable dick. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's just I, like, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say like, I, I'm more of a fan of Osborne. Yeah. Than that Bayani. See, like, I need to, I need to finish Verdian Gate. I have not finished it yet. I'm on book five. So yeah, that's kind of, that. that's kind of the shift where, yeah. where Osmar goes from being like, it's this. It's the same tipping point. It's kind of like book three, book four yeah. for for Rogue Dungeon for Scott. Book five is really the tipping point for Osmark, where you really start to like see like his because in in VGO, Osmark and Jack are foils of each other. So Osmark is a foil in the sense that he's a guy who got a lot of power and was like, I'm going to make all of the hard choices because no one else is willing to make these hard choices. Right. And Jack, who starts off very idealistic through the early parts of, of the VGO series, increasingly gets more and more power and realizes how easy it would be to be Osmark. Because when you have this power and you're the one that's responsible for making the choices, you can't make everyone happy. And so kind of there's this growing moment where like Osmark doesn't really change in the way that Scott does. But there's kind of this begrudging respect that builds between the two characters as the series progresses. Yeah, I know one of my favorite scenes is whenever Jack brings Osmark into like the Shadowverse for the first time and he's like yes. I did not know this was even possible. Like he's just in awe of like his like abilities that he've gotten through the game and stuff and he's kind of gives him that grudging respect there. Yeah, and then and then I and I will not I absolutely will not spoil the ending of of uh, of BGO, but uh, in some ways Osmark is is also the the hero of that of that story. Um, again, in the sense of like, yeah, he's I mean he is a bad guy, but also like he did save millions of people by doing all of this stuff to create this world and and to bring it to fruition in such a way that that it could be used as kind of this this escape pod in the face of impending, you know, calamity. So yeah, he's a bad guy, but also not really. And I, I like playing with that trope. So uh, Sam asked here, uh, how many side series are there for VGO? And I was trying to do it in my head. Is there five? There are, there okay. are five. Um, so, so uh, the VGO series obviously is the main series that we recommend people start reading. There is a reading order. Like if you go to any of the VGO books on Amazon, there's a, a recommended reading order. Um, but the thing about them, kind of with the exception of Firebrand. So Firebrand has some overlapping material um, with the main series. It has the most overlapping material, although there's still significant standalone uh, content from Abby's perspective. But uh, the the rest of them are really designed to, to that you could read them as, as their own series without ever having read the main, the main storyline yeah. and still be able to understand and enjoy the world. I was going to say, I pulled up my Heartfire Healer uh, one real quick in it. So uh, the recommended reading order in the book is um, Main Series, The yeah. Illusionist, uh, Imperial Initiative, Firebrand, Alchemic uh, Weaponeer, and then Heartfire Healer. Yeah, that's our that's our recommended reading order. Which, but, if, uh, you want, if you want a really dark villain, this one. <laughs> Heartfire Healer's villain is what the hell yeah super I, crazy I, religious trauma all like in in emily's a, emily's a fantastic writer and she does really really good like like character writing and character mm -hmm. art like she's a she's a, a great writer for that i remember when i got the audiobook for it because i was so excited about it i was i was ready for it this was one i was looking forward to i was like i need that cleric like healer type yes main character and i was like oh it's in the verdian gate world let's go this is gonna be good and then I read it and I just sat, I had to sit there after finishing the first book. And I said, what the hell did I just <laughs> experience? Because that is, there are so many flags in this book where I'm just like, what? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, it's a whole thing. And and with that said, even even though the, like there is a recommended reading order, I always tell people if there's a, a series that you're like, no, this one sounds interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Like if you want, again, Heartfire Healer is a, a great example where you know if you want the a dark but also like a, a dark storyline, but with this this kind of cleric healer storyline, like yeah, just go and read it. Like it, it's not it's not going to detract from anything else if you right. don't read it in this recommended order like you can pick up any one of those series that sounds intriguing to you and just jump right in and i mean each of the series they do kind of like overlap with events from the right main series because they talk about oh what is it in book i can't one? remember which like the the in when jack invades roan heath and he, yeah. and he takes it down which happens in book two of the main series but yeah uh um like that is covered, but again, it's 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 covered from a different perspective, right? Because right. the the MC in Heartfire Healer is is not part of the the Crimson Alliance. She doesn't know what's happening, so she's just like in this city when when basically the barbarians are at the gates and they take over, and suddenly people are on fire, and she's like, "Whoa, this is this is terrible! Like the city is falling, people are dying." that person over there is running and they're just on fire. What am I like, what is happening right here? And so she has a, she has a very different view of Jack um, because of kind of her proximity to the events yeah. that happen. And that, I, that's always one thing I love about seeing like side series is seeing different main or different characters within the, the main world and having an experience of like, this is my opinion of the character. This is what, like what I'm seeing but since if you've read, you know, the main series, you know, hey, this is Jack's reasoning for the right. invasion. Yeah. She she doesn't know that. So and, and I think that's kind of the like that's that's the big push for the series, right? Is that like Osmark has his own perspective and, a, and a very specific viewpoint, and Jack doesn't have all the information, and so he thinks Osmark is a terrible person. Right. And and the the main character from from Heartfire Healer doesn't have the same information that Jack has. And so they exactly. think this, this guy's a, this guy's a, a terrorist, basically. Uh, he's a, he's a fantasy terrorist and you know, what a, what a monster, but again, no one has all of the information. And so you can right. kind of only deal with the world with the information that you have. And it gives you this very different perspective based on where you're standing for events. All right. Well, so we're going to migrate to a series that gets a little bit darker. And yeah. of course, shout out to um, all three of the main series that we're going to be talking about today. You know, uh, Viridian Gate Online, Rogue Dungeon, and Vigil's Vow are next with top tier audio performance. With uh, Viridian Gate, you have Armin Taylor do the yeah. original or the main series. And yep. then I, there's, I think, different narrators for each of the Yeah, we have a right? bunch of different... I can't remember who all narrates uh, the other one, but they're, but they're all good. We have we have some really phenomenal... I, I think Emily Wozeller does, and she's like one of the main voice actors for uh, Cyberpunk uh, uh, 2077. Um, but Emily Wozeller does a phenomenal job on the Firebrand series. Uh, I think Vi Vicus, Vicus Adams? I, I Vicus? don't know how to say uh, but he does, the, he does the uh, uh, alchemic weapon ear, and then uh, which Vikas did the original narration for um, Divine Dungeon and oh, yeah, Vikas. yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so oh, we got Jodan in the in the chat. Yes, Joe Dan. I, I actually have more. Uh, so, so Joe Dan, so this if, if you have read the, the VGO series. Uh, uh Joe Dan, the living dungeon, who is uh one of the featured characters in that series, is actually based off of this Joe Dan right here. So jo Joe Dan and I go back a long ways. I, I think even before or like right around when I had started writing Lit RPG. So he he had actually found me through my urban fantasy stuff very early on. And uh he had like this is a this is a terrible thing to do, but he had messaged me and he was like, Hey man. Like, I love your stuff. And, and we got to talking and I was, I was in Colorado. He's like, Oh, I'm coming through Colorado. So I just invited him and his family, a, a random internet stranger over to my house for a barbecue. And uh, so I, so he just came over and we barbecued together and uh, that's how I met Joe Dan. And we have been, we've been uh, good friends since. So he's, we got to meet Joe Dan at the shadow alley press booth at dragon con. And yeah. we started talking and he's going to be a, a guest at some point. We need to, Jodan, we need to get in uh, contact, buddy. 
Message yeah. me on Facebook. Yeah, I, I will say, I will say, uh, as someone with with slightly more wisdom now than I did back then, inviting <laughs> rando internet strangers to your house is usually doesn't. Is not, I mean, isn't not that a just a Tinder date now? What's that? Isn't that just a Tinder date now? I, I know you, you know, you might be right. You might be right. <laughs> But uh, but it did work out, and uh, we 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 love us some Joe Dan, and Joe Dan is is uh, he's writing a, an awesome series, right? Or it, first book in an awesome series mm-hmm. that I think is going to be amazing, and also narrating. Um, well, I he might be narrating it himself, uh, so he's also. Oh, I was talking. I, I know he's narrating for uh, TJ yeah, Lamarty. He, yeah, so he's he's writing his own series as well. So not only is he, not only is he working on the narration side of things, but he's also actively writing his, his own series right now as well. Well, so damn, Joe Dan, like we gotta, we, we gotta read this book now. I mean, it's Joe Dan. So I'm going to read it. That's I know I, you, you absolutely <laughs> should. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's workshopping it right now. I think he's got the rough draft up in the shadow alley team alpha channel. Uh, getting feedback on it uh, up there. So, um, but yeah, Joe, awesome. Joe Dan's a good guy. That's and awesome. uh, he, he and I have been uh, narration buddies. So I, have, I, and you and I have been talking about this, but I've been, yeah. I've been playing around uh, uh, with a little bit of narration and, and uh, Joe Dan's really? been critiquing uh, some of my audio clips and helping me work through various Reaper settings and stuff like that. Reaper is a fun program to use but i am about to throw my laptop because that's what also i use and i need to <laughs> take a whole course on it because my narration mentor he's the one that recommended it to me and he's been tied up i haven't really been able to touch base with him on like editing and stuff like that so i can edit some of the chapters i've recorded and i'm trying to figure it out myself and i'm like <laughs> pause Dude, it's brutal. It like it we is. were talking about this. We were talking about this earlier. Um, but uh, the the learning because like when you like when you listen to audiobooks, you're like, I love books and I love reading books. Yeah, and I like reading books out loud. So like this seems like a perfect marriage. This will be very easy. It is not very easy it's at not. all. No. And uh, uh, as soon as you get into it, you have a a renewed respect for the hard work of all of the audio narrators that make it sound easy because it is not, it is an extremely complicated process to do. And like watch, I've watched uh, a lot of cold reads, like with Jeff Hayes, uh, Andre Parsno. Um, I think I've sat in on a couple of Travis's and Steve Campbell's and I'm like, I have nothing but the utmost respect for you guys. I'd love to work with you guys someday. I'm not confident enough to be there yet though. Holy (laughs) hell. This is a whole nother experience. Yeah. Yeah, Steve Steve Campbell has been super generous with me. I reached out to him with some of my stuff. And I was like, hey, man, I need, like, because I, I had been workshopping my stuff with Joe Dan and some of the other folks at, at Shadow Alley, like readers and stuff, having them listen. Um, and they were giving me good feedback. But it's not the same as having a high-caliber professional yeah. narrator be like, hey, this is what's working, this is what's not working. And so I asked him because we're, we're we're friends, and I was like, "Hey, would you be willing to listen to some a, a couple of chapters and critique stuff?" And uh, so he did. And then he we did a Zoom call, and he like walked me through his whole process. He's like, "All right, here's what you're doing wrong. Here's how you have to fix this." And and uh, it was it was an eye opening experience. So okay, I I reached out to uh, Steve right around the time of I think uh, Guild of Icon. Uh, yeah. Geneva was like, "Just message Steve. He's great." I met him at Dragon Con. He's super and nice. That that was one of the things for me at Dragon Con this year. Um, this past year was going there and like doing the podcast and everything. It's like, wow, I've gotten to meet so many of these people through doing the podcast and just interacting with them. I'm meeting them in person. And yeah. like authors <laughs> I've not even talked to about being on the show yet, but I've read their work and I like them. And I've just been like nervous to like kind of talk to them. We're coming up and like, hey, you're you're Richie, right? And I was like, Yeah. And Geneva was like, yeah, he's got, he's got podcasts. Go talk to him. I, was I don't like, know what to do with my hands. <laughs> yeah. that's a... Yes. No. So um, when I said hi to Steve, he was like, oh, we, <laughs> we follow each other on Twitter. We've, we've interacted a few times. It's finally nice to put an actual face to the name and everything like that. I was like, thanks, Steve. You're just way too nice no see and he's canadian so it's genetic uh but he's he's just uh, <laughs> same he's with just ryan a, de bruin yeah 
Yeah, he he and he and Ryan are are you know Tao Wong is also Canadian, I think. But uh, and so is Michael Chat. There's a lot. There's more Canadians than you would think. But uh, but yes, uh, uh, Steve and Ryan are are very Canadian. Oh and, yeah, uh, I I love them for it. And another narrator who's Canadian, uh, Justin Thomas James, over at Sound Booth Theater. Super nice guy. I did not realize he was Canadian. Yep, uh, I learned that at Dragon Con, uh, and he actually pulled me aside and was like, "Hey, I just want to tell you how much we love the podcast and like what it means to us and like the charisma you guys have and everything." And I'm I, I'm over here, very first night. I'm overwhelmed because we had just drove nine and a half hours and I'm yeah. like, I'm on the verge of tears. And he's like, did I upset you? And I was like, no, 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 no. Just overwhelmed. Holy hell. This made my day. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's awesome. I, um, there's a couple of questions, but I did, I did want to point yeah. out, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to post this in our private chat. So I don't forget because, uh, so do, do you know, and I'm sure I brought it up, but do you know, uh, uh Katie cross, um, I'm sure the name rings a bell. She's, I'm not... she's, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't. She's not a uh, uh, lit RPG author. She's a young adult fantasy author, but very, very successful. Uh, she, she was actually the one who um, kind of put me on the trail of, of audio narration. So basically her story was, I, she, so she does a lot of, like talk about a workhorse. She writes a writes and releases a book every single month and has for like two years or three years. Like it's an, it's an insane thing that she does. These are like full length, like 90,000 right. word novels every month. Um, but about two years ago, she, she was like on book six of a 12 book series. Um, her narrator bailed on her very suddenly. And so she went to her, her fans. She's like, Hey, look, this is what happened. I don't want to re-record these books because it would be really expensive. So there's two options. Either I get a new narrator or I try to narrate these books myself. And her yeah. fans were like, no, we want you to, we want you, the author telling the story your way. And she's like, but I'm not a professional narrator. They're like, we don't care. We want you to do it. Um, so she, she was like, okay, I'll try. She took a couple of courses and uh, now, not only does she write her book, she then narrates her book, and so she'll release both the ebook and the audiobook every single month that she narrates. And uh, her audio sales went from about like, I think she said they were like maybe fifteen percent of her gross revenue came from yeah. audio. And after she started narrating her own books, uh, it jumped significantly to like twenty three or twenty four percent of her gross wow. revenue started coming from audiobooks because mm -hmm. there's kind of that better connection point between. Uh, between her and her fans. So anyways, they, she, uh, she, we were talking about it and she turned me on to this course. This is a, a Udemy course. Um, I think this by, is the one you sent me the link to. Uh, I may have, I may have already um, done this, yeah. but, but uh, he does a really, really fantastic job of like, and he uses Reaper. So he does a really fantastic job of like going through Reaper and setting up yeah. FX chains and setting up the, like doing your own editing and your own mastering and like how to export the files and, and be in ACX's range. And so uh, definitely like worth going through that course. If I'll have to definitely check that out. I'm just waiting for uh, finances to catch back <laughs> up because yeah, totally life is expensive. And when you have an addiction to books and audiobooks, <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> So Mr. So. Mr. Doc says, Lit RPG is not a genre I've read before. Very interesting, fantastic reviews. Well, thank you. It is it is super interesting. And I'm going to warn you right now uh, that once you go down <laughs> this rabbit hole, it's hard it, to get back out. It's it other people will be ruined I for you. It. I fought it for the longest time because Joel was like, you've got to read the land. You've got to read the land. I'm telling yeah. you right now. He wore me down. He came out to visit me in October of 20 or 2018. I didn't start until August 8th, 2019. That's when yeah. I finally did because it was my birthday and he he got me a copy of the land. He sent it to me and I was like, all right, fine. I'll read it. And I was like, wow, I don't really have enough time to read. And he goes here, sends me a code for the land book one. I started listening to it while I was at work. Now I have over 600 books in my audio library. <laughs> and, and we share an account, and that's just the books I've picked up. Yeah, Joel has picked up, I think, close to seven or eight hundred. And now I'm like, <laughs> yeah, we are. Um, I've spent way too much money on Audible. <laughs> it's true. 
I'm going to stay in boat. So I, um, before I got into lit RPG, I, I was already a full time author before I had started writing lit RPG. But I was writing uh, urban fantasy. So my first series was called the Lazarus series, urban fantasy, kind of shoot 'em up action adventure. I have the like, first few books on that. Uh, and it's it's right up your alley. But I was working on like the third or fourth book um, when I had come across this was 2015, Way of the Shaman. So Way of the Shaman was my very first lit RPG yeah. book. It was one of the one of the early Russian translated novels because yeah. at that time, th like there there really were not very many lit RPG books on the marketplace. So like Play to Live, Way of the Shaman, um, Alaron's book throughout. I think. Uh, I, I'm not even sure Luke's books had come out, Luke Chemilenko's books, but I think uh, Awaken Online was out, like the first two books and that was out. And that, and that was like, there was not much. And I remember right. reading Way of the Shaman because it got recommended to me on Amazon. And I was like, what is this? I don't understand. Like, why are there stats and things? Because the lit RPG community didn't exist yet. And I remember getting to the end of it and thinking like, man, that is so weird. And also I think that I need to read more of it. And uh, and so I, I read through that entire series and I was like, man, this is really strange, but I'm I'm going to read a little bit more. And then I found Play to Live. And after that, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to start writing one just for fun because I was already writing Urban Fantasy. So I was like, I'm right. going to do it like on my own, just on the side, little side project. And I started posting it on Royal Road. And uh, and then I published that one in 2016, and it immediately surpassed all of my urban fantasy sales. And I was like, well, I guess I'm gonna keep doing that. So that's kind of how I stumbled into it. But yeah, I, I was an early adapter to lit RPG. So uh, Mr. Doc did say the only urban fantasy I've read so far is the Dresden Files, great series. Um, yeah, I'll check. Need to check those out. So, Mr. Doc, I'm gonna need you to uh, <laughs> prick up your ears for me real quick. There is a series, you can see it uh, kind of just right behind Mr. James Hunter there, called Vigils Bound. It's Vigils Justice, book one. It's right there. Beautiful, beautiful. Take yes. the Witcher with guns. <laughs> and he's a former Marine. Yeah. That's all you need and to you know. You can't it's, understate the system. Like no, the you system can't. in that the series system is just is fantastic. And just not to mention, he has a fairy companion who's an absolute dick. Murder, and, he has murder, his best friend. True. and he has his best friend who's a ghost he's a spirit guide not really much of a guide but we love him anyways he is fantastic and if you get the audio books they're narrated by the fantastic luke daniels there's four books out on audio yes go check them out and they're done by podium audio which they pr they produce some yeah. top tier content and yeah i, I live in podium con uh, podium audio content i have way yes. too much podium in my so yeah, go go do that. And this is going to be our segue into Vigil's Justice. James, tell us a little bit about Vigil's Justice. So, so I always said that because I I I love urban fantasy, right? That was that was the first thing I started writing. It was one of the things that I loved the most when I was was writing, you know, I've always been a big uh, urban fantasy fan. And there's not a lot of urban fantasy lit RPG. It just hasn't done that well in the marketplace. It seems like high fantasy tends to like be the thing that does the best in kind of the lit RPG progression fantasy space. But I really wanted to write urban fantasy and I wanted to write urban fantasy lit RPG. So I was like, all right, how can I do this and write a thing that people are going to want to read? And so I, so that's kind of what I came up with as a, a vigils justice. That's kind of the, like, it's my, it's a love letter to urban fantasy, but it's got this high fantasy feel to it. And it's obviously lit RPG progression fantasy um, but the main character, Boyd Knight, uh, is basically this Marine who dies in the Battle of Fallujah and he gets isekai'd and reincarnated. So he's he, he's in this firefight in this kind of weird Assyrian temple. Uh, he dies and he ends up, because he dies in this temple, getting uh, isekai'd and reincarnated uh, by this sort of weird five-faced interdimensional god of justice and reincarnated in this sort of kind of grimdark-esque, like high fantasy world. Um, and tasked with going and hunting down evil and killing monsters in exceptionally cool ways. So it's really fun. It's kind of got that same episodic monster of the week vibe that you get in urban fantasy. There's kind of a mystery component where he has to like, there's kind of a whodunit and he has to solve the thing and then he has to kill that thing. Um, so yeah, if you like urban fantasy and you like kind of Witcher-esque uh, high fantasy, it's it's a great blend. I was going to say The Witcher meets Supernatural. Is another yes, The Witcher meets it. Supernatural is exactly right. Where you, where uh, Boyd Knight is uh, a perfect combination of Sam, Dean, and Cass. Like that's just the only way of, of, to really go about it. So, 
this, um, this is yeah that I mean that 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 was my goal. And and Joe Dan said uh, as a combat veteran, I wrote him a whole letter over the prologue PTSD. The prologue is brutal. The prologue that, is brutal. And I yeah, mean, that's that, one it, thing in lit RPG where um especially because a lot of the authors are former uh, former military, like there there's a huge you know population of you guys there, and which first thank you for your service. That's uh, my my family is m- pretty much all military. Yeah, I'm the book nerd. Um, there's there's sometimes a lot of brutalness. Um, I was gonna say yours, Dakota Kraut's uh, Completionist Chronicle starts off pretty pretty brutal yeah. for especially for one that's like more of a young adult type novel yeah. as well. I was like, wow this is how we're starting it. This is going to set the tone. And then it has a lighter shot. I was like, Oh, okay. That's okay. We're good. We're good. And then, um, another Ten one, realms. The 10 realms, um, uh, Battleborn by Dave Wilmarth. It's is very brutal beginning. Yeah. So, and I would say Shadowcroft Academy is kind of brutal, but not in the military aspect. Yeah. So, but that's, that's just, that's another thing. Um, I did post something. In it's, the it's, hard, it's hard to do. It's a guy where, where a character has to like, die and not have it be a, a, a little bit traumatic i will say yeah. that with like vigil bound it, it, it it's a it's a pretty brutal world overall it, it doesn't ever like lighten and tone the way that like shadowcroft or divine dungeon does um but it's not but yeah that the the prologue for for vigil bound especially if you've served it's a it's 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 very intense going because it's basically him in the battle of fallujah he's in fallujah and he there's a, a you know his convoy gets hit by an IED and there's, yeah, you know, a bunch of, bunch of people die and it's kind of a house to house thing. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty brutal. So, um, but it's, it's true to form, I would say. I feel like that is becoming a trope of like American lit RPG. And I love it. It is. <laughs> it is. And I mean, um, we're here for it. Cause I mean, Joel, what are you, what are you reading right now? Ja- uh, Anime Isekai, you get hit by a truck coup in America. Fire, you fire. die a war veteran and, and you're just off to another world. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, if you're if you're okay with Brent Weeks, you'll be fine. That's that's fair. That's fair. Uh I did post something in the private chat, uh James, if you could take a oh, look okay. at that for me real quick. Yeah, no, we I, oh. I can talk about that. All right, cool. I just want to make sure. So uh we'll go ahead and pop that up. Where did it go? So uh, Sam did ask, is uh, Shadow Alley Press closed for submissions? Uh, do you guys take submissions from authors uh, or is there a process? Like, how do you how do you find your new authors? So so yes and no, uh, it's it's complicated. So we did try to do open submissions one time and it was a nightmarish experience because the reality is, is that we're a relatively small company and we have a relatively small staff. Right. So. Um, so me and my wife run it. And then we have like an operations manager. We have our marketing manager. We have our art director, Jess. Um, you know, so, and, and like we have editors and, and artists and, yeah. and things like that. Um, but the actual like core staff of shadow alley is, is pretty small. And uh, so when we did the submissions, we got like flooded with stuff and a lot of it was great, but we just didn't have the manpower to get through it all in a timely fashion. And one of the things that I hate about traditional publishing is how glacially slow it is. And I, and I have been on the receiving end of that where, you know, if you're trying to query agents, I mean, you know, six to eight months is a pretty standard response time. Yeah. And then even if you get an agent, you could still be looking at six to eight months once they start shopping your book around. And that just seems like crazy to me. And so one of the things that I, I said I never wanted to do was that. And, uh, I, I thought we'd get a few submissions or it would be kind of sporadic, but no, we got like inundated with submissions. So we, was, what back in 2021, you guys did that. I remember yeah. seeing the post for it Yeah, because it was, it and, was uh, like COVID had, had hit, but it was yeah. starting to slowly, like, it's like, Hey, we're getting back to normal and everything. And yes, I remember Basically, seeing the post after everyone was stuck in their house, writing books. They finished. Oh, I wasn't stuck in my house. I was them. working the entire time. Yeah, that was essential. But. So yeah, so that that it was like it, it was right around that time, like late 2020 or early 2021, and uh, so we we had we we put it out there. We expected to get like a handful of manuscripts, but we got we got flooded, 
and we we did our absolute best to get back to everyone as timely as we could. But it was it was just really it was a, a really challenging strain on our on our infrastructure that we didn't realize would be there. And so um, now we are kind of open to submissions, but it's very selective. So basically, uh, the the way it works is um, myself and and our our head acquisition editor is a guy named Cameron. We're always on the lookout for new things. So we're, we're really looking for people that are active in the community and that are posting stuff and are engaged with the community. And basically, we're just looking for things that we like. I, I was telling you guys earlier, Shadow Alley is in in large degree uh, just a way for me to publish things that I think are cool. Um, and so I'm, I'm just constantly looking to the community to try to find people that are active. I'm in a lot of the, the Lit RPG author groups where people are are writing things, they're workshopping their ideas. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm starting this new story. I'm posting it on Royal Road, and I'll just go read it there. And if I liked a thing enough, then not, I'll reach out, or I'll have Cameron reach out, and I'll say, "Hey, I really like the thing that you're doing. I'd like to publish it." So, just being active and engaged in the community is the number one way for us to find you, um, because we want people that are that are fans of the genre. There's, you know, that like Lit RPG as a genre can make pretty good money. And as a result, you get a lot of people who are not fans of the genre and are here because they want to write and try to exploit the genre. We don't want to work with those people. We want people who love these books, who love these genres, who are already a part of the community. And so that's where we're really like talent scouting is we're looking in the community for people that are active and engaged. Um, the other thing is live events, right? A lot of the authors that we have met and that we work with now are authors that we met at live events like Dragon Con or Jordan Con or, you know, places like that. Um, because he was a Marine. He didn't learn how to read or write. Yes. Thank you. That's, that's totally fair. Uh, and, and not, not completely inaccurate, but, uh, yeah, live events are the second best place. So be active in the community online. Um, that's kind of where we're, we're already looking. And then like, if you want to work with us, come meet us at a thing. We are, are we're, we're pretty vocal about where we're going to be. Right. Um, and just like, come talk to us about the thing that you want to do. And we'll either give you feedback. We'll have our acquisition editor, take a look at your, your thing. Um, and tell you like, yeah, this is for us or no, it's not for us. Um, but mostly it tells us a very important, crucial thing, which is, and I don't know if you guys are allowed swearing, but are you a dick? It's surprising how many people are dicks and we don't like working with dicks. Uh, we, we want to work with people who are nice and easy to work with and make my life easy and fun. So, cause you know, we do events, we do signings together. Shadow Alley holds a giant retreat every year where we invite our friends to come out and we like play D and D and we drink too much and we watch bad movies together and we soak in the hot tub. So like, if I'm gonna work with you, I want to hang out with you. And if I don't want to hang out with you, it, it really doesn't matter how good of a writer you are, I'm probably not gonna publish your thing. All right, so James, I'm getting mixed signals because you said you don't work with dicks. My name's Dick, What, what what's up with that? You're here hanging out with us. <laughs> Why James. do you think it took so long for him to get here? Damn it, it's my fault, <laughs> fuck. James, it's true, you, I swear. you, you, you hey. have this bias working against you, but 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 you have shown, <laughs> you've shown you're, you, you, you know, you've broken the mold here. All right, all right. You're our dick, everyone loves their own. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> we love you, buddy. I'm giving you a hug <laughs> if you're a Dragon Con this year. I won't be a Jordan Con, sadly, but if you're there, Joel can give you a hug. Yeah, Joe, Joe didn't actually came to our retreat, I think, two years ago. Um, and like just as a as a special guest, uh, and we 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 had him come out, and it was it was really fun. I miss Jordan. It's good, uh, Jordan, but yeah, Dragon Con very like if you want to network, uh, go go to Dragon Con. That's the single best place uh, where you can go to meet publishers, to meet authors, to meet narrators. Like go to Dragon Con. They they always say a con is like a vacation or whatnot. When I went last year, I was like, no, I'm talking to all these people. And like, I, I built a lot of friendships. Like I, I talked yeah. to a lot of people. I mean, I, I got to talk to you for a brief moment. I, you, you were busy, but anytime we saw each other, it was like, Hey, always good to see you. Yes. And it was, it was a blast. And I mean, even when we came up to you at the booth, it's like, Hey, you recognized who we were. That made me happy. I was like, ah, oh, James isn't going to know who we are. We're, we're, we're nobody. Susie saw us, Richie, Joel. I was like, Okay, no, this is a whole new level. Like it I is, got anxiety. But man, so that's that's the thing, right? It's like publishing 
I think it's like this in any industry, but like people think that it's really big on the outside. Yeah. But once you get inside, you realize that it's a pretty small world mm -hmm. and that there's a lot of interconnection oh, that yeah. happens. And they're like kind of everyone who's in the scene kind of knows all of the other people that are in the scenes. And, um, and, and so once you get in, like you're, you're kind of part of the community. And so, yeah, go, going to those events is the single best way to, to, to kind of get in and, and forge those friendships. I mean, like, yeah. Cause uh, Dakota, even like he, he knew who we were. Yes. And I, he, uh, we did our second episode and it was on the ritualist. Like and that's yeah. when we were doing like kind of more our reviews, like, Hey, this is what we liked. This is what we didn't like. He showed up in our Twitch stream, just like, yep. Hey, this is awesome. You guys are fantastic. Yeah. So for him to remember us and everything. And he was just like, Oh, you guys are awesome. And then Kong, I, we've had him on the show. He yeah. was our season one finale or level one finale. I almost had a nervous breakdown meeting him in person because <laughs> I was like, this is a guy who wrote my favorite series. Yeah. What is this? What is this? And I and uh, Geneva took a picture of out Aaron and I together. And I'm like, I'm on the verge of breaking down. I'm just like, ha, he, yeah, here, here, book. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, no, the community is fantastic. And that's one thing I've always said I loved about this uh, genre is the community behind it. Because I've yeah. made a lot of good friends. Like we have our mod, Zeckler. He's, he's become a great friend. We game with him all yeah. the time. I game with uh, Stephen Landry, uh, Steve Rowland, and like even uh, Chris Stagney or Christopher yep. Johns. Like we we all have like gaming sessions and everything. And it's just, it's it's a fun time. I've built so many amazing friendships and bonds with people I never even thought I would ever actually interact with. And I was just like, I yeah. like your books. Yeah, it's 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 a funny thing uh, because I, and it's I, like I said, I've been I've been around for for a while um, and sort of predated the, the lit RPG as a writer. And other genres are not this way. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I most enjoy about, you know, write, writing in lit RPG. I mean, I love the stories, but I, I love the camaraderie in the community. I, so I'm a big I'm a big uh, uh, Will White fan and I really love Cradle. Yeah. Um, and uh I, I, I always joke that like like Shadow Alley is, is my attempt to 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 be Ethan and just bring all of us to the top together, right? Like like writing is a lonely business, right? You're just by yourself a lot of the time, and that sucks. And it's really nice to have people that you can spend time with and talk to. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna start a, a publishing company uh, to help my friends become best-selling authors so that we can do fun things together. And that was like literally my, my only goal was like, I just want, I want all of my friends to be able to do this thing so that we can travel together and hang out together. And that's, that's been a big part of my aspiration and goal on the publishing side. Like, yeah, I want to, uh, you know, put cool art out and make money, mm -hmm. but really it's, I want to hang out with my friends in cool places. Um, and so we've been able to do that. You know, we've been able to, you know, we have our shadow alley retreat, uh, things every year, but you know, because of this, I've gotten to go all over the world to to London and Mallorca and to Spain and Valencia and Bali. I was gonna say you were going to Spain when we first tried to set That's up. Right. You were just you were just getting ready to leave, or you were already there, and you were hanging yeah. out with Chatfield and That's a few right. of the other guys. And I was like, "What the hell is this? Okay, like <laughs> what, this what, is... what is this life where I just get to 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 be in you know Valencia on the beach, you know, hanging out." hanging out with my friends and, and writing, you know, writing stories for a couple hours and then going and jumping in the beach. And, and it's, you know, so that's a big part of the, uh, of, of what I get out of, of writing and being a publisher is, is, is getting to help people that I like um, do cool things in the world. So yeah, it's a, it's a really cool community. It's really great. And that's one of the reasons we love doing the show is so we can promote like the authors that we absolutely love and talk about their work. And, you know, if people haven't heard of, you know, James Hunter, they don't know Viridian Gate Online or Rogue Dungeon or Visual Justice. This is how we can bring people to a new audience or authors to a new audience. Yeah, and that's one thing we love. We just love talking about these books. We want people oh, we to read these books because they are fantastic ways for this genre. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we and I mean, there's not a lot of lit RPG podcasts out there. There there's a few and like we're we're all working together. We want to make sure the authors get the love and recognition they deserve. Yeah, like these books, sure. they help me through a tough time. I have really bad uh, depression, anxiety, listening to these books and reading these books is my escape. 
Yeah. So if I can give someone else that escape for just a few hours, that's it's that I know thing. I'm doing my job right. Yeah, you know, and it's it's hard, right? I I will say that, um, you know, especially like kind of during the pandemic and things like that. I, I know a lot of writers that like got burnt out, and they're like, "Man, I can't do this anymore. This is, you know, because it it can feel very defeatist. Like, why why am I doing this when there are so many other bigger problems in the world?" But then I think back to the pandemic, and I think about how like how much music and television and movies and books and audio books, like those are the things that helped me not to go insane. Yeah. Like th those are the things that saved me during a, like during a time when just like crushing darkness. And so again, kind of on that same, that same mindset of like, Hey, we get to do that for other people. We get to, to, to make their lives a little bit more bearable for, you know, for however long we, we yeah. have access to them. And that's great, man. That's, that's a, that's a true gift for sure. It, it is. And like, I mean, Joel and I, we, when we first started the series, it's like, we were going to do like theory crafting. We we're yeah. going to be like, okay, so what's in store for Kaz and Rorik in the rope dungeon? What, what are we going to get next? And now it's like, Hey, go read this damn book. You need to, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's amazing. You won't want to put it down. I don't know how many books I've gone through now because I'm working, you know, 10 to 13 hour days a, a day now. And yeah. like I submitted my time card today, 59, 32 for the week, 59 hours and 32 minutes. I was like, fuck, that's like six audio books right there. Yeah. It's All a right. lot of audio. Yeah. And I mean, I don't, I don't take my AirPods out unless it's to charge them for 15 minutes. Then I put them right back in. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, I, kind of just transitioning though, about um, how, how, how big audio, how, how big of a piece of the audio market is now. Um that is the one thing that has continued to grow year over year. And our genre, lit RPG and progression fantasy, more than any other genre, uh, really kills it in audio. So yeah. I, I would say, you know, talking like romance is kind of up there. Um, but like on a gross monthly revenue, romance is like 20% of their gross monthly revenue comes from audio. Hard sci-fi, military sci-fi is a little bit higher, like kind of the 25%. Yeah. For a lot of lit RPG authors... 50% or more of our gross monthly revenue comes from audiobooks. And I think a big part of the reason uh, is that because a lot of our readers are e like exactly like you, like yeah. they, they work jobs where they can just listen to audio while they do their job. And and that's what they do. So they'll just, you know, I throw chips on a shelf for a living. I'm in and, and out of right. different stores. And I mean, even between um, the truck I drive for work has Bluetooth. So I just hook my phone up, I mount it right there and it goes right there. Um, that we'll we'll get to that question here in a second because I just saw it pop up because I know that's uh that's a, actually a common question that I've seen asked, but it's a good thing you bring up the audio uh, portion of it because if you go to a lit RPG post, if you go into lit RPG books, uh, lit RPG or Gamelet Society, whichever group on Facebook, the top question under a new release is, "Hey, audio." Wait. Question is the mark? audio coming out? That's right. <laughs> Every time. Like, Every I don't time. know how many times I asked Brian Norton, when is Scavengers getting its damn audio? And he's like, hey, here's the audio book uh, date now. It's June 4th. I'm like, yeah, that's what yeah, I thought. Yeah, I, I, already, I, I already listened to the, the first audio book, and the narrator was great. And uh, I couldn't Wisniewski. wait, so I started Absolute reading the second book. Daniel but, uh, yeah. yeah. So, but, and that's another thing I really love about... Um, lit rpg is a lot of the books and i'm thinking 95 percent are on kindle unlimited which yes. kind of goes into our question of do you guys get a um a profit from kindle unlimited readers yes absolutely we do uh generally i would say that uh, like a direct sale you get a little bit more but if you read on kindle unlimited please read on kindle unlimited so the way that the fund works um is is we basically get paid per page read and there's a giant Kindle fund that comes out every single month. So we don't know exactly what the payout is going to be per page uh, until that month. Um, but generally, and it's not like a lot of money per page, but if you have enough page reads, it, it does add up. And, and I will tell people all the time, if you're a Kindle Unlimited reader, please read, read on Kindle yeah. Unlimited. We're making money that way. And also, I understand like a lot of the people that read in our genres, they're 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 
they're binge readers. They're, they're like the people that get Netflix and, but instead of binge watching a show, they binge read books. And the reality is, is that for people where that's their main form of entertainment, like it's, it's too expensive. Some, some of these people read like a book a day or sometimes even more than a book a day. And so it would be prohibitively expensive for them to try to go out and, and buy those books. Kindle unlimited is, is a great middle ground, right? Where you pay the subscription fee and you get to read all of the books that are in Kindle Unlimited. So I always tell people, if you're a Kindle Unlimited reader, we are so glad to have you. Please pick those books up on Kindle and, and get your money's worth. Read as many books as you possibly can. And what I what I like to do is if I read something on Kindle Unlimited and I'm like, wow, I really enjoyed that book. I go get a paperback copy for my shelf. And then if I'm yeah. going to a con, I take it with me. I mean, you remember seeing my post on uh, I do. TikTok right before Dragon Con. It's like, hey, I'm bringing these books down for uh, some of our UK friends because it saves them worrying about shipping it to the hotel yeah. and everything when I'm driving down. Joel, yeah, how many books sure. do we have in our car? Like 72 was, on the way down? Yeah, around 80. Because we took books uh, down for... the entire back trunk was full. <laughs> I was going to say, we bought books for... Or we brought books down for Don Chapman. Uh, Kevin Sinclair and uh, Lars yeah. Muller for the Artem uh, universe. Uh, That's right. Jez sent his to Geneva. I think Geneva brought her, brought him down or um, someone else did, but it's like, I reached out to them all. I was like, Hey guys, if you need to, we're doing, I'm already doing this for Don. Yeah. And here, here we go. So uh, we picked up Stephen Landry sure. and his, um, his girlfriend on the way down and they had Kevin's books. So we were just like trying to play Jenga in the car. And then I posted on uh, TikTok. I was like, hey, here's all the books I have. And you had commented and said, don't bring Snake's Life because Kenneth isn't going to be there. And I was like, damn it. But still. Yeah, he's he's great. But he does not. He's he's a very hermit uh, cabin in the woods type author. Where I had to be a hermit after uh, Dragon Con because I was overwhelmed. Yes. Sorry, I'm just going to grab a, a refill real quick. I'll be right back. You were good. So, uh, Mr. Doc, if you're going to check out James Hunter, I definitely recommend uh, either Verdian Gate, Rogue Dungeon, or Vigil's Justice. Uh, Rogue Dungeon, I think, is a perfect introduction into uh, lit RPG where it's got a good magic system, but also like that game like mechanics. Um, so, yes. And <laughs> Nick Fodell. So, Nick Fodell did do the first five books, but for the final book, it was switched over to Travis Baldry. I didn't notice until book or until about four or five chapters into the book. Um, definitely, definitely recommend it. It is fantastic. I think book, is it book three? That shit really just hits the fan real quick. If I'm remembering correctly, because you have troll nation, it's civil war troll nation. I can't remember which one it is. Stuff gets nuts and it's just nonstop. So that one is really good. Luke Daniels is the narrator for Vigil's Justice. He does a great job. He has that great gunslinger voice. An absolute oh, yeah. catcher. I, I love there. his... Uh, uh, Verde and Gate Online his also. just It's fantastic. It, th you can't go wrong with any of the books. So if you're if you're gushing about Nick Podell, definitely check out Nick uh, Rogue Dungeon to start with because it's yes. fantastic. Just know, if you start with Nick Podell... <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have a hard time switching to another narrator. I did. It took me actually months to warm up to Luke Daniels. Like yeah, I, Nick, I had I a really, long really page like for... Luke Daniels, but man, Nick Nick Bedell could narrate a phone book, and I think I would listen to it. That I mean, is the most common he's... thing ever said. It's like this man could read a phone book, and I would I would read it. True I remember story. Him, him and Travis Baldry, man. Those are the, they're they're my they're my two goats, man. They're so good. And then of course you have your sound of theater guys. Like it's just there's so many there's so much talent in the yeah, RPG sure. universe and it's hard to like build a top five list because it's like i don't want to show any disrespect for not putting people on the top five i know and i'm like i can't do this if you say who's your favorite narrator i'm just gonna <laughs> <laughs> they're all so good in their own way they are and they all have such a variety of range and they they show like with yeah. like i said visuals justice Luke has such a gunslinger voice. His yeah, voice does. for uh for Boyd is fantastic. And for is it Cal? Is that his, yeah. his best friend? The way he does Cal's voice, I chuckle every time. Yeah. So Cal he reminded me of like Cameron from uh Ferris Bueller's Day Off. 
a little bit. Yeah, got, it gives I the camera a camera vibe. Guy. Yeah. It's like, oh, we, we can't take my dad's car. No. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, they're 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 def yeah James James Marsters uh, he's um, he's a fantastic narrator. We we had we had briefly looked at uh, at trying to get him for a series, uh, and then we saw how much it was going to cost to get him for a series, and then we decided not to do that because it's it, you know it's <laughs> the again and not saying he's not worth it because um, he's a fantastic uh, uh, voice actor, but uh, yeah it's it's like buying a new car and so that's, i thought i'm not in the budget yet <laughs> not in the budget yet that's right someday someday so i'm trying to think of other stuff because i know you got uh plans tonight which is well why i did the episode. I, I did uh did want to bring up uh so i'm working on a new series discount dan yes so that's that's about. what i wanted to seg segue to and have that be kind of our big finishing touch because yeah go ahead and give us the pitch for discount dan uh, so Discount Dan is the newest thing that I'm working on, and it's super weird, and I love it. Um, so it's on Royal Road right now. If you guys are Royal Road readers, you can go check it out. Uh, it's just type in Discount Dan, and you'll be able to find it. Uh, but basically, Dan is a general contractor who, after a, a night of drunken debauchery at a bachelor party, wakes up to find that he is no clipped into the back room. So the back rooms is kind of you, you don't need to be familiar with the back rooms to enjoy this. If you've heard about the backrooms before, you'll you'll get a kick. But uh, basically, the backrooms is kind of this internet lore um, where you can no clip out of reality and end up in the backrooms, just like in a video game, where if you go through the like a wall at a certain point, you'll no clip out of the framework of the video game. Uh, so it's kind of the same thing. There we go. Um, yes, this is it. So so Dan no clips into this backroom, the the backrooms, and it's sort of my take on what the backrooms is, which is kind of this giant twisted never-ending dungeon that exists just outside of our own reality and it, it it's kind of a giant parasite it's a it's a huge mimic that latches on like a parasite to our dimension and it feeds off of our dimension uh, and all of the stuff that it eats sort of gets jumbled up and spat back out into what is the back rooms and it's it's really really strange it's absolutely bizarre um it's got if you're if you're a big fan of dungeon crawler carl it's definitely got that same kind of irreverent uh dcc vibe for sure um little more horror elements uh but it's it's fun action adventure lots of violence really really cool i'm i, I think the system is is probably one of the things that i'm most proud of it's it's not a, a it's not a a deck builder but it's, it's similar uh, instead, they it's this relic system uh, where you can kind of assemble relics, and they give you different different magical powers. Uh, you can upgrade them in in various strange ways, but it's it's a bizarro, absolutely fun time. Also, the the main character, the the sidekick character, um, is, is sort of this. It, he's a mimic. It, it is a mimic. Its name is Croc, but it's kind of this friendly, broken mimic that can't really shape shift very well. And uh, so it ends up shape shifting into this this blue dog uh, who's made entirely of, of Croc shoe material, and he's got these big stupid googly eyes. Um, he and and Croc just wants to be a helpful good boy, but he can also shape change into this like nightmarish, you know, gibbering mouth or uh, you know, with tentacles and a thousand mouths that can that can consume enemies. It's it's wild. It's super fun. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're big into I, I always tell people it's kind of like uh, if if Jake's Magical Market, with the actual market part, uh, had, had a had a illegitimate love child with Dungeon Crawler Carl, you'd end up with uh, with Discount Dan. So it's it's that's, very strange. that's a good. I was gonna say that's a good uh, collaboration. Lots of fun. I've read up to chapter twenty five. Okay. On yeah uh, Royal Road, um, which Sam asked how many chapters. It looks like it was uh, fifty six, including the epilogue. For book one, and then um, for book two, you're up to chapter fourteen posted. Yeah, that's right. So, and, and my plan is just to to keep posting on Royal Road. So, um, again, it's not the the fully edited manuscript that'll come out once the book is finally live, but uh, it's free, and you can just blaze through those chapters. It's, um, it's definitely a fun read. It's yeah, it's really good. I remember seeing you talk about it for the first time on TikTok. And I was like, wow, this sounds really interesting. And I immediately went over and favorited it. And I I loved it. I'm sad I haven't gotten back to 
finishing it just because my backlog is ridiculously long oh, and if it no, doesn't have audio it's gonna play. sit for a minute so i am sorry no i i understand the, the the audio definitely makes it easier because i you know and, I, and i'm the same way now i mean I, I read a lot um for work like when when i'm reading and i'm you know i'm like looking for new things but uh but definitely like if it has an audio book you know, I'll just pop it in while I'm doing dishes or I'm I'm cooking dinner for the family or I'm going to the gym or I'm, you know, commuting someplace like I, I can just listen to audiobooks while I'm doing literally everything else. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to uh, to, to just do audio on a, on a pretty consistent basis. He likes the pressure. So he's only written to 13, but he released 14 before he wrote it to add pressure. Yeah, no, I hate that. Uh, that's the worst part about Royal Road, actually. I mean, yeah, I, I listen. So I listen to audiobooks when I game. I've been playing, you know, Dragon's Dogma, Baldur's Gate, whatever. And if I'm just out okay. exploring, it's it's what it's what I do. I just have an audiobook. And if I'm not in a party chat with Joel and talking about the game, I mean, yeah. hell, even when we played Apex, I, I've had an audiobook in it. I was like, Damn, we need a battle royale like lit RPG. That would be so yeah. much fun. I, I feel like there are a couple that have gotten released, but I don't I don't know how they did. I know like uh Pangea Online, um, the third book includes a battle royale scene um yeah. for the tournament, which was a very, very fun uh part. And I was like, wow, we need more of this. Yes. <laughs> um, what is it? Rise to Glory kind of adds like a smite oh, yeah. MOBA feel to it, uh, which it's uh written by alex knight well they have like a battle royale game mode it's it? it's a tournament at the yeah, end tournament. so uh that one i always recommend if for the battle royale or like yeah something that's not the mmo rpg yeah. aspect uh the one the guy who accidentally started the apocalypse is battle royale inspired Shout out to Dave Pushman. I I love Dave. And of course, Zach, we're giving the plug to Dave. <laughs> so, but Discount Dan. Yeah. Is, and anyways, is it's uh, so I, I don't know when book one will come out exactly. It'll be sometime this year. Book book one, two, and three should be out this year. Um, but uh, we're, we're kind of waiting to figure out what we're going to do with audio. Um, we're in talks with Audible to see if Audible Studios is going to produce it. And if they're not going to produce it, then we'll, like Shadow Alley will produce it internally. Um, but so, so we're, it's, we, we try, like, we, we don't always have to do simultaneous release, but we, we really like it if we can have the audiobook come out within like a month of the ebook coming yeah. out. And so until we know for sure, you know, whether or not Audible Studios is going to want to pick it up, um, it's kind of in this weird limbo zone where book one is done. And book two is, uh, I would say it's about about a third of the way done. Um, but we don't, we have no idea what the release date for book one is going to be because we don't know who's going to do the audio or when the audio is going to come out. And that's going to be a big determining factor on the release of book one. But until then, it'll be up on Royal Road. I'm going to continue to release book two and, and book three up on Royal Road as well. Um, so you can always grab them there. It's it's a fun series. I I recommend it. It sounds good. I I I don't know if it's a good introduction it yet, to lit RPG, but it's definitely it like good. once you understand the gimmicks a little bit more, you kind of know the world building and stuff like that, and what to kind of expect. Yeah, definitely go into it. So it's it's more of an advanced lit RPG, not a beginner lit RPG, but it is definitely worth it. And if you want to test, yeah, test it and be like, hey, you know, I'll give it a shot. Definitely do it then. Yeah, it's a, it, the the this the system is weird and it is definitely unique. So it's you know if you're not if, if it's your first lit RPG book, it, you, you might be like, I don't know what's happening here. But uh, um, but uh, you know for a lot for a lot of people that have, have, have read a lot of a lot of lit RPGs, it's it, you know you'll you'll slip right into it. It's fun fun series. That's that's kind of my uh, my forte now is just like <laughs> you know lit RPG. If if it's a lit RPG, I'm most likely going to pick it up. If it's yeah. if I see a certain narrator's name attached to it, I'm definitely picking it up. Definitely gonna pick it up for sure. So hopefully, uh, once uh, Joe Dan gets his uh, stuff going, gets his act together. Yeah. Come on, Joe Dan. <laughs> oh, I mean, I could be saying that about me too because I have been slacking hard on stuff. But um, so we're coming up to the end of the show because James, I know you got plans tonight. I do. Sam, thank I you so plans. much. Well, thank you guys for having me. I'm sorry that like. 
it took me like three years to be on your show, You're but thank good. you guys for finally having me. I really appreciate it. James, you are good. It's it is it is no been fantastic. Problem. So one thing we like to do to end our shows yes. is hey, what you've been reading. So who wants to go first? James, Joel? Which which one of you wants to go? Let's go first. What, uh, I, I always go last. That's that's my thing. Uh, I always go last. So I actually just started this one called Apocalypse Me. It's on uh, Athon, but it is this concept where like everybody gets a concept um, whenever like the system takes over and this dome appears over this city and it's a battle royale for apocalypses and you're apocalypse is based off of your concept and hmm. that's interesting it it is super interesting and fantastic uh other than that i read through judge that was fantastic michael head shout out yeah. to michael head yeah uh eldridge knight i got around to finishing mother of learning book four i've been putting it off for so long just because a lot of other stuff has come up and also i didn't want to finish the series like it was it was so good i didn't want to like finish it um titan uh path, path of, the, of titan. the titans yeah i knew where, i knew what you were going for uh oh, daniel was other than that that's what i've been been reading uh james why don't you take it away with uh what you've been up to well i'm gonna i'm gonna pick up apocalypse me i, I just pulled it up looks good <laughs> so i'm gonna try that one uh, so I just finished reading the second book in Brian Norton's series, the quest Academy, and I'm reading right now the system universe. I'm on, yep. Uh, and I'm on system universe book two. I've been listening to those on audio. Um, and I like those there. Book two is much slower paced than book one was. I felt like book book one had a little more grindy feel to it with like killing monsters and dungeon stuff. This one feels like it's definitely, a little bit more on the slice of life side of things, but I'm still enjoying it. So system universe, uh, basically the main character uh, is a, is a guy who sort of weathered one system apocalypse and then gets trapped in a void uh, and, and ends it's, up getting spit back out in a different system. Apocalypse. Is that the one that's got the terror on the front cover where it's that's the, guys, the one that's okay. got the terror on the yeah. front cover. That one's been on my list. I haven't checked it out yet, but I've, I've heard nothing but good things about it. Athon puts out a lot of books and it's yeah. like my backlog just grows and it's like, Hey, Athon guys, I love you. Give me a minute, please. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a, it's a lot, and they have they have a lot of great yeah. authors, a lot of great a lot of great narrators. Like I said, we, you know, we we're uh, we're we're much smaller and we're much more selective about what we put out. Um, and and part of that is because we want to, you know, we, we want to make sure that every like that there's there's enough time to read all the books that we put out. But uh, I, I am enjoying it. Um, I, I really like book one. Book two is 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 good. Um, so we'll kind of see where I go. I, I, I very rarely anymore read past like a book two. Um, usually it's like, I'll read a book one and I'm like, yeah, this is good. And it kind of, kind of gives me a feel for like what's happening in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, but I have to enjoy it a lot to read more than book one. So I read it. I liked it enough to read a book two. So that's a, okay. that's a, 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 a high praise generally for me. So same thing with Brian's book. I like that enough to read book two as well. So I'm a character in that. That's yeah. Yeah, excellent. 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 So I get mentioned with my complicated name of Rich <laughs> Dolphus Ironblood. He goes by yeah. Rich. So that that was um, me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the, that's kind of what I'm reading right now. How about you? Uh, so for me, I am working my way through, or I'm continuing Vigil's Justice. I had read the first two on Kindle, and I had the audiobook for the first one. I was like, wow, I probably actually should go back and do the audio, so that way I can continue the series. Because we did an episode on Vigil's Valor uh, or Vigil's Justice last year. No, end of 2022. Okay. Because we did a partnership with the Drunk With Buds podcast. And oh, yeah. I actually sent um, Honer a copy of the book. I was like, hey, here's an audio code for it. Enjoy it. That one's on me, buddy. Yeah. Uh, so I did that. I did uh, System Activation, which is book one of Path of the Titans by Timothy McGowan. Uh, I got to arc read the actual book for that fantastic and then daniel wisniewski killed it with the audio loved it um 
I did a re-listen of Arcane Cultivator to get ready for Arc- Arcane Cultivator 2 by Harmon Cooper. Uh, fantastic, fantastic book. And then I did a re-listen of Mimic and Me 1 to get ready for Mimic and Me 2. And that is next on my list. And then Eldritch Knight by Timothy McGowan as well. Um, I can't remember if I talked about Daniel Schoenhofen's um, Apocalypse Now. The His... No. I, I can't remember if I talked about that Apocalypse on the last Gate? Or Apocalypse Gate, yeah. Yeah. It's um it's another harem style for um Daniel, which is really, really good. I know I brought up all the skills last time because we did a show a week ago, actually seven six days ago. So I went through a lot in six days. Yeah, man. You you um... uh, you've been you've been cranking books. Wow. I, I am a I am a kind of a machine when it comes to books now. Yeah, I would say so. I would say so, so. And my and I have two credits, and I'm like, okay, what am I picking up next? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's where uh, that's that's kind of where I'm at. And it's like, oh god, Joel, our audio library just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and our backlog keeps growing. <laughs> yes. So the uh, I was gonna say because you said you were reading Mimic and Me, I saw the cover for book three, and it looks crazy. <laughs> It looks nuts. And I like how the first book's cover is like, you know, you got you got the little mimic sitting on his uh on his shoulder. Mimic's name is Chester, by the way, which is a perfect name for a mimic. And he's eating yeah. a cookie. He loves cookies and cake. Book two, he's a giant carriage. And book three, he's a turret, like a war cannon like tower. It's, it's ridiculously like, yeah. insane. And I don't know where it's going, and I'm all for it. And which yeah, it's a, it's a sound booth theater. Uh, production which jeff does the voice for chester which is completely different from boxy's voice from the um everybody loves large chess series so and that's what sold me on it when it when it was first announced it's like oh yeah i'm doing this but it's not me doing the main narration i'm just voicing the mimic and i was like oh i'm sold i'm sold jeff is doing a mimic voice i'm sold so that's that's uh my my list and uh, speaking of can i can i share one thing with the yeah. with the, the viewers before we go speaking of weird cover art so i'll share this one this is the cover art for uh uh well uh do present if you don't have access you can put it in private chat and i can pull it up i think so let me see here Window. oh right there all right so this is the the cover art for uh discount dan book two uh let's see can you there guys see that yeah I, I had to add it to the stage that is so, is that that is terrifying. Steamboat Willie? yeah it's it's <laughs> it's uh so the 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 main sort of bad guy for for discount dan 2 is this creature called the franchiser which is like this weird amalgamation of all of the worst franchise mascots so yeah, we have pennywise our, so it's it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a messed up uh a ronald mcdonald we have mm-hmm. our our horrifying uh star crack uh franchise mascot and then steamboat willie who is now a uh, public, public domain, domain is just steamboat willie but evil steamboat willie so which i mean he's getting a horror yeah. slasher film anyways so, yes just like the winnie so, the pooh blood and honey movies that's right so we have our we have our our, our franchiser hydra here uh you, 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 kill, you kill one and they just keep coming back man you can't can get rid you of them. please send that to me so i can show my <laughs> girlfriend because i'm trying to sell her on this series and it's i think that right there will sell her yeah this this is a this is a good litmus test if you look at this you're like yes i am that not is fantastic. i'm not I repulsed it. by this um it, it might be might be up your alley but so anyways, yeah, I thought I'd share that since it's just absolutely wild. That is fantastic. I love that so much. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. Please join us next Sunday, the 8th. Let me make sure I'm getting my dates not right. Not next Sunday. But, or not this not, Sunday. Not tomorrow, but the 8th, <laughs> a week from tomorrow. So the 7th. The 7th. I was wrong. My days are off. So on the 7th, please join us for another episode where we will be sitting down with HP Hollow slash ED Sky once again to celebrate um, and promote her box set for Titan Mage. It's an audiobook, and it's an omnibus of five books. And come find out why I'm going to talk about why they put the steam in steampunk. So that's that's something I should definitely recommend. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we'll be taking a few weeks off um, until after Jordan Con, where we will uh, be bringing on Rachel Kneekirk to talk about her newest book with Legion Publishing. And uh, 
if you don't know anything about Rachel Niekirk, she wrote some characters for Baldur's Gate 3. And her writing style is fantastic. And I got to listen to a little bit of the book when Andrea Parsno was narrating it live. And That's I awesome. It. I have it pre-ordered physically on Kindle and on audio. I'm excited for this damn book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we're having her fun. on the week after the book comes out. I have to get through a bo- her book in a day, essentially, just to get my <laughs> notes ready. Do it. <laughs> you can do so, it. I believe in you. That's, that's going to be a no-brainer for me. Yeah. Um, but James, James Hunter, thank you so much for coming on the show. No, it thank you, guys. Lot. We are so happy you were finally able to join us. And we are not mad. I promise. We are not mad that it took three years to get on here. I'll be a little petty. But... <laughs> <laughs> No, well, it I was... really appreciate your guys' patience and willing to, to work with me. Hey, we on, know you guys are busy. Schedule, but it... uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. This was awesome. So much fun. This was an absolute blast of a time, and I want to thank everyone who turned, tuned in to view. And if you ever uh, need recommendations for RPG or anything like that, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter over at Rich Dolphus. Uh, that's my name uh, over here. Yeah, right right there. Or uh, reach out to Joel <laughs> at Sir Valor Hunter. Um, we can we'll talk books that's all that's all i like to do is i I post recommendations constantly yeah so thank you guys so much uh we we appreciate everyone who tuned in we hope to see you next time thanks all